Are hey, y'all ready to get this started? Three, two, one. Hey, I know what time it is. You know what it is. You are now tuning into the best business radio program in Central VA. Turn it up. On the mic with Mike. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to On the Mic with Mike, the premier business radio program in the area. I'm your host, Mike King. Uh, you can find us every day on ESPN Richmond as part of the Mike King Biz Radio Network. We are on 5 to 7 a.m. ESPN Richmond 106.1 as well as on the Choice Gospel that is 105.3 and that is 2 to 3. We are here today for the Good Vibes Feel, Feel Good, good Summit. Summit. What we're doing is uh, Mike King the Net Shore we're highlighting the good that happens in the community here and so that's what we're doing today. So on the mic with Mike uh, ESPN Richmond uh, and we're going to turn over to the Net Shore uh, who is a uh, partner with this endeavor here because she does. She's a non. She is my nonprofit uh, funding expert. So we're going to turn over to her for a moment. Thank you, Mike. It's great to be here, and we are in great company today with an amazing group of people who really serve the community here, both in helping the nonprofits do the work they're doing, and those who are delivering these amazing services to those in need in our community. So thank you for being here to our panel. Thank you for being here. I'm very excited. Um, we have just collected a great group of people. So I can't wait to introduce you guys and. Why don't we start with that? We'll let you go through and say who you are, who you work with. Um, just a short snippet, anything else you want to say. So Adrian, I'll start with you. Sure. Um, Adrian Wright, I am the CEO of Determine Incorporated, which is where we are today, um, and the president and co-founder of Collaboratory of Virginia. And I'm so glad to be a friend of this. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having us here today. When the space opens, you will come see the Collaboratory of Virginia, and it will be a magical place for nonprofits to be. So. Thank you for having me. Great, thanks for having me today. My name is Dion Henderson and I'm the President and CEO of Partnership for the Future. Um, I have the opportunity to work with our area's most amazing students, um, many of who are first generation students with aspirations of attending college. And so we not only help our students get to college, but also through college and for success beyond. Thank you. Uh, my name is Kelsey Conrad. I am the Community Outreach Coordinator for the PGA Tour uh, with the Dominion Energy Charity Classic. And I work with Birdies for Charity, so I have the privilege of working with any charity in the area. Right now we have about 130 signed up for our program to leverage a 10% bonus uh, through the PGA Tour. We'll hear more about that, I hope, soon, and you'll get to tell people how to access all the groups. I'm Mark Smith. I own Midas of Richmond. We support a variety of area nonprofits with marketing, with cash donations, and with other types of support. I'm Stephanie Becker, Executive Director and Co-Founder of Better Together RPA. We provide support services to children with rare and complex medical illnesses here in Central Virginia. Excited to be here. Being on a show with Mike and Nanette is always a privilege and a treat, so thanks for having me. Good morning, I'm Sarah Rosenbaum. I'm the Chief Impact Officer at the Jewish Community Federation of Richmond. We're the umbrella organization that supports our local Jewish community and a variety of programs here in Israel and overseas. Thanks. Mary Mopay, Development Director with Safe Harbor. We're a local nonprofit here in Henrico County that serves survivors of sexual, domestic violence, and human trafficking, providing the services and shelter that they need to heal and rebuild their lives. Thanks for having us. My name is Kevin Royston, uh, CEO of Stepping Up, and pretty much what we do is we provide social interactions um, and educational events for people with, in our special needs community. Hi, good morning. David Potter with CFIT Community. Uh, we are a new, newly formed uh, nonprofit in Chesterfield uh, that focuses on the overall health and well-being of all of our citizens, um, not just looking at the emotional, you know, fitness, health, but all, all parts of the health. Um, as it relates to the individual. We know it's very important, especially what we've been through so far in the last year or so. So very happy to be here with you. Well, as I said, my name's Mike King. We'd like to give a shout out and, and thanks to uh, the good folks here at the, collab the Collaboratory. Collaboratory of Virginia, yes. yes. Okay. So Adrian <laughs> is here. We'd like to thank you. Give thanks. us an idea of what the location is, your mission, and then we're going to start touching on some of the cool things that you guys are doing. This is going to be an open conversation about what you guys do and the impact and the partnerships between 
private partnership of uh, community organizations? Sure. So I will mention both of our organizations. So U-Turn Incorporated, we're getting ready to celebrate our 30-year anniversary next year, and we're so excited. Um, we historically have done youth development through the vehicle sports, and now we're more than just sports. Um, we do community programs like robotics and art programs and visual arts and things like that that can just serve the entire family and mentor kids and give them inspiration and a hope um, beyond um, just their every day. Um, and then we co I founded the Collaboratory of Virginia to help support nonprofits in capacity building. So it's co-working space, but it's more than just space. It's also an accelerator and an incubator in order to push nonprofits further um, and afford them something that's been afforded to the tech industry in the small business community and startup community for years and so we're very proud of that um, Nanette mentioned that we are going to be fully open um, very very soon but we actually are doing a hybrid so co-working is available right now for nonprofits and that capacity building is available now and I'll add your big point is that you're below market rates if uh, someone wants to rent the space for their offices and it's going to be beautiful downstairs where we are in this building you can't tell but it's just a taste of what it's going to look like upstairs when it's all said and done right yes thank you so I appreciate that excited. yeah we're super excited all right, Mark Smith, we're going to kick off with you. Uh, sir, thank you for coming on the program. Talk a little bit about the commitment that an organization has to the, the nonprofit, the community, and how you see it benchmarking and helping you. Because a lot of times there is a direct correlation between helping and revenue. Sometimes people talk about it. It's maybe a bad, a bad idea, but that really is a partnership that does happen. Mike, I think the ideal connection here is, and you and I have had this conversation, talking about 6 by 18, what happens when you multiply the 6 inches between your ears by the 18 inches from your heart to your head. The for-profit is the 6 inches between your ears, the non-profit is the 18 inches from your heart to your head, and if you partner with the right people and you work on creating the right outcomes, everybody wins. You know, you look at the Midas stores here in Richmond, Short Pump is the largest volume Midas store in the world, it has been for 12 years. Uh, our other stores are all well above average, and the only thing that's unique about us is how we go to market with the nonprofits we help. I think that dynamic is available to any for-profit business in Central Virginia or anywhere that wants to explore it. All right, Stephanie Becker, uh, you saw a need as a, as a nonprofit, mm -hmm. and you created something from a personal experience. Talk about what that means to you, and how do you interact with, with the sponsors and donors and what does that mean to Better Together? Thanks, Mike. Um, Better Together was started as a result of my son, Jack, being diagnosed with stage four cancer. Um, our life was turned upside down and um, we, we lived in crisis just trying to figure out and navigate that journey. Um, shortly thereafter, a friend of mine's son was uh, diagnosed with a rare lung disease, um, less than 40 documented cases in the country. Um, the difference we saw in these two different diagnoses was the support available to our families. Um, the pediatric cancer community is very well supported, but if your child in, has a rare or chronic illness in Richmond, there is no existing organization to provide non-medical support. So that call to action is really what started Better Together. Um, I couldn't imagine what life would be like to not be supported as a mother, as um, as a caregiver for a child with a life-threatening illness, and our desire is to provide that type of support that we received um, that proved our journey to be successful and really to equip our families with the tools they need to successfully care for their child um, going through uh, a lifelong journey. In that process, what we have learned is that it, it took a village for our family to to successfully get through treatment. It takes a village for a nonprofit to, to successfully deliver services. Um, what Better Together does is allow for-profit organizations the opportunity to weave community outreach into the fabric of their business. Um, we find that the um, ability for companies to give back and allow their employees to give back, whether it's volunteering, whether it's financial, um, whether it's like what Mark said, just marketing, raising awareness. Um, is as beneficial for that organization, that company, as it is for the nonprofit. And it really becomes a win-win. I think Mark said it beautifully. So um, our, our partnership with the community is important in order to deliver services and makes us successful and I think really makes our community successful. One of the cool things about this, and we're going to throw it to Nanette, 
is that there are over a thousand nonprofits, and each time you hear about one, you're like, oh wow, that's really cool what they're doing, and then you find out what they're doing, and you're just blown away. Like, okay, this is uh, what we do here is we blow up people's, you know, brands. Tell the safe harbor story, please. Give, just give us an idea, our listeners, who you guys are, what you do, and the impact between you and your sponsors and, and supporters as well. Um, so Safe Harbor uh, is a local nonprofit. We serve survivors of sexual, domestic violence, and human trafficking. Uh, we just celebrated our 20th anniversary. Yeah. Um, we were founded um, in uh, conjunction with Bon Secours. Uh, their nurses in the emergency room were finding, um, were getting honestly just frustrated that they were sending survivors back to their abusers. There was no designated shelter space in Henrico County for, um, for uh, survivors. So um, we opened with one shelter, um, and we now have four shelters plus an extensive community program. Um, unfortunately, domestic sexual violence and human trafficking is something that is happening right here. Um, in our own backyard to our friends, families, and um, community. Uh, Richmond, believe it or not, is one of the top 20 areas in the nation for human trafficking because of 64 and the 95 um, highways and that kind of thing. It's a very much under the radar um, type of crime. Um, we established the first comprehensive recovery program back in 2016 for human trafficking survivors, and since then we've housed over um, 80 individuals um, through that program. Um, it's something that, uh, you know, isn't talked about um, in regards to domestic violence, um, sexual violence, and human trafficking, but one in four women and one in 10 men will experience some form of violence during their lifetime. So it is something that is happening to our friends, our families, and our, and our coworkers. The way we partner with our community is um, through education, awareness, um, helping folks know that we are there. It always pains me when I hear, oh, I didn't, you know, I went through this and I didn't know you were there. Um, there, you know, we're there to help, to heal, to transform and, and rebuild. Um, but we also partner with our, our corporate partners in the sense of helping them um, with the statistics I just shared, they're dealing with domestic sexual violence within their, within their ranks, within their, their coworkers um, and employees. So we partner with them by helping to provide tools and education that they can then share with their um, employees in accessing help and resources um, to allow them to heal and you know be um, mentally fit, emotionally fit, those types of things. Thank you. And I think you also have an opportunity to um, purchase one of the homes so that you can feel yes. even more secure yep. in providing those services to uh, to women. Mm -hmm. and, um, it sounds like yep. it's going to be amazing, yep. which they so deserve. So. I can't wait to hear more about that. Uh, on that path, also, we still want to learn more about the other nonprofits here. Um, but I'm also going to throw in another little question, and we can come back to those who have already gone. But I'd love to hear some of your positive takeaways from the last year and a half. You know, we're sitting here today on what? in August and things are starting to heat up again. We're going to put that aside and we're going to look at what we've come out of the last year and a half and, and how that has made us better as an organization. So Deanna, I'll let you start with, again, more about your organization and, and the answering that question. Well, our organization, Partnership for the Future, has been around for 27 years. So we have a rich history in our area of helping um, students who are first generation again and maybe also low income get to college and so uh, the past year and a half have been challenging for our students not only have they um, been in school virtually for over a year but we also had to shift our programming to virtual to the virtual space and so um, one of the things that came out of it is that we really worked on um, developing a virtual platform which allowed us to connect our students with different professionals where um, location may have been an issue, um, speaking to our students, sharing their experiences. Um, we were also able to engage with more of our alumni who may have moved outside of the Richmond area. And the reality is, despite all of the challenges, our students really thrived this year. And so we have a couple of PFF firsts, as I would call them this year. Um, we had one student to apply to 77 colleges, um, which, which was a record. Um, for our program, <laughs> for anyone. Um, she was just an overachiever and just really got excited about um, the prospect of going to college. Again, she's the first in her family to go. Um, we have our first student who will be attending Princeton um, this year on a full scholarship as well as our first student. 
um, also gone to Stanford on a full scholarship. And so we are incredibly proud of all of our students. Again, I'm highlighting some of the first, as I call them. And I let our students know they may be the first, but they won't be the last. And the, the last thing I'll share with you is that each year our students um, amass a very large amount of scholarships in total um, as they begin the college application process. And so this year's class had over $16 million in scholarships collectively. We had 50 graduates um, from the city of Richmond, Henrico County, Chesterfield, and Goochland. And so we are incredibly proud of our um, high school graduates of 2021, um, the class of 2020, who entered college virtually. Many of their experiences was a little bit different. Um, than they experienced and so we are just proud of our students for persevering and, and graduating first Yale graduate this year so we had a lot of great firsts um, despite uh, the pandemic and for that we're proud um, and our support of our students has been unwavering despite uh, the pandemic so that's been the positive Kelsey you get to give away the money and meet all the nonprofits. <laughs> so um, share a little bit more about what you guys are doing and how you, if you've adjusted or yeah, absolutely. Um, I think I'm in a, a little bit of a different perspective right now than a lot of the people on this panel just because I don't work directly with um, a nonprofit, but I, I get to work with other nonprofits in the area. And just the support has been unreal over the past uh, year and a half. The amount of uh, charities that we've had that have been part of the program and the money that we have been able to generate through the program um, has just been pretty much on par with you know the 2019 numbers which uh, has been great to see so I work for uh, the PGA tour we do birdies for charity and with birdies for charity uh, a nonprofit can register for the program and donations that are generated through our program are bonus 10% uh, up to $10,000 per charity so at $100,000 um, we like to say that it is a no risk all reward situation uh, there is absolutely no risk to signing up if you generate zero dollars to the program you still get the benefits of being part of the program, which is being on our marketing materials, being able to attend the tournament for all three days of play, and then um, you know just having that community support. But if you generate twenty-five dollars to the program, you still get that ten percent bonus on that money. So uh, we've definitely seen that uh, you know the support in the Richmond community has been unwavering through this time. Thank you, Sarah. Tell us more about what you've done and kind of how the last year and a half has unfolded. Yeah, um, it's, I'm, again, I'm with the Jewish Federation here in Richmond. Um, I think the last year has allowed us to be more nimble. We've, we've made commitments to support um, our local Jewish partners, our, our congregations, um, but we know they need more support in this past year. Um, COVID hit our community just as hard as every, every other community. Um, the rise in anti-Semitism um, over the past year um, has been something we've been at the forefront of combating. Um, we didn't make too many changes in who we are continuing to support, um, but we know that we need to be doing more to support everybody. Um, we raised uh, almost 300000 at the very beginning of the COVID situation, and not only did we support our, our programs at the Jewish Community Center at Beth Shalom Home, but we also knew we needed to support Feed More and our partners in Ukraine um, who were dealing with the same issues that we were. Um, and we needed to be nimble to do that. So while we, I'm going to echo that we've been able to make more connections via Zoom, um, we've just tightened everything we've done. Um, so that's how the last year has, has changed for us. Thank you. Kevin, tell us you work with the uh, community uh, with adults with disabilities. Uh, uh, yes, it has been. Um, with us, um, like I said, we try to create, you know, social environments as far as for our people in our special needs community, which has been kind of hard because with COVID, there's not a lot of social activity um, going on. So we've had to change some things and try to do more of the Zoom and the WebEx type of things. But it's kind of hard because that's not what they want to do. Um, so it worked a little bit. We were able to do a financial fitness 
uh, with the help of uh, Virginia Credit Union, uh, which was successful. Um, as things started opening up, uh, we were able to um, we were able to uh, start putting on some events, uh, still practicing the social distance and um, things like that. Um, but right now, it's it's still kind of it's, it's, yeah, it's still tough. I, I know. Have you on my show a few weeks ago, and you brought uh, two gentlemen who live with you, but also benefit from the programs, and they did talk about that um, in their own words. So you know the lack of of interaction and how that is so important to them. So thank you for what you do. Thanks. And I'll go to David. David and I met a few years ago, and been plugging hard on a project that's going to launch very soon. So share a little bit more about what you're doing. I'm not sure COVID has been a, a real factor yet, but. Uh, Sure. Well, well, COVID probably helped us in a way that um, we will be the only people maybe at the table that can say we created a nonprofit during a pandemic. <laughs> so, um, go, sir. yeah. <laughs> so um, that was a challenge in itself, but it also gave us the opportunity, you know, because the world kind of slowed down a little bit. So when it comes to developing our board and our partners um, and going out to the community, um, you know, which was phenomenal. And early on, um, CFIT Community uh, was really born out of a partnership with Chesterfield County and sports backers in that they created an active living strategy some years ago. And we took that and expanded it, you know, to basically what CFIT will be when you see us launch soon with the website and other things um, will be pretty much the resource that all folks, you know, health and wellness related will combine the resources for you. So if you could just imagine, um, you know, needing a healthy lunch option, you know, after this, maybe there's a CFIT app that shows you where you can go to to get that. Or maybe there's a partner, um, you know, I've worked full time for Parks and Recreation and we do a lot of things health and fitness related, but the YMCA does it, you know, so many spiritual, you know, organizations and things like that. So gathering all the partners at the table during COVID, um, you know, was a little bit of a challenge, um, but we've been the supporters at Virginia Credit Union, as he mentioned, have been phenomenal. Um, you know, Dominion, Ortho, Virginia. So many folks have come on board, and I can't thank the you know the business partners and those listening. You know, really, when you see us in a year or so, it was you all that really made it happen. Thank you. Yeah, and I'll add a little bit since I'm very knowledgeable about it. We've been working together, but really, this will be the space um, and and the platform for all things health and wellness within really central Virginia, uh, focusing on Chesterfield County. So whether you live, work, worship, play, travel through, come to a tournament, you will be able to access this information in one place and be able to say, like you said, where can I get a healthy uh, um, meal? Where is there a, tra a trail near the soccer tournament that I'm gonna be sitting at for hours? Um, all things health, we've got eight, they've got eight pillars of um, emotional, physical, uh, intellectual, financial, et cetera. So, uh, it's very exciting, so everyone keep an eye out, and, and really partners are coming from all over, not just Chesterfield County, because of the value of what this is going to bring to the community, so we're excited. Mike?